Welcome to this Academy introduction to foreign exchange, also called Forex or FX. In this video, we'll look at what FX spot and forwards are, their main benefits and how you can use them in your trading. Forex trading is the process of converting one currency into another. It's commonly traded OTC, which stands for over the counter. This means that market makers are actively creating the markets in contrast to other financial products that are listed on exchanges. In the OTC market, you're able to trade both FX spot and forward outrights. Now let's look at the main features of Forex. When you trade Forex, you're buying one currency and at the same time selling another currency. So Forex is always traded as a currency pair, with the first currency in the pair referred to as the base currency and the second currency being the variable currency. The second currency is valued as X amount of units compared with one unit of the first currency. This amount is the exchange rate of the pair. In other words, it is the price for a pair. All currencies have a three-letter currency code assigned to them. For example, the code for the US dollar is USD, the code for the euro is EUR, and the code for the Japanese yen is JPY. The combinations of two codes make up a currency pair. Pairs are typically ranked in a certain hierarchy, which determines the order in which the two currencies in a pair are named. For example, when euros are traded against US dollars, they are always traded as euro dollar. So if you wanted to speculate that the euro would increase in value against the US dollar, you would buy euro dollar, meaning you buy euros while at the same time selling the converted amount of US dollars. Meanwhile, if you wanted to speculate that US dollars would rise against euros, then you would sell euro dollar. A pip is the standard increment used when defining a price movement of a currency pair. Its purpose is to measure the amount of change in the exchange rate for a currency pair. In other words, the profit or loss that you make when you trade. Generally, one pip refers to the fourth decimal of the price. Euro dollar is an example of this. But in some currency pairs, a pip can refer to the second, third or even the fifth decimal. The most notable example of an exception to the fourth decimal rule is the currency pair dollar-yen, where the pip refers to the second decimal of the price. But please be aware that most FX platforms nowadays offer pricing with an extra decimal. For instance, in one-tenth or half pip increments. This is more commonly seen in the major currency pairs than in the non-major pairs. The monetary value of your profit or loss depends on the nominal amount that you trade. If you've gained 50 pips in euro dollar for a trade in 1 million euros, you multiply the million with 50 pips and your profit in this case is 5,000 US dollars. Pips are valued in the last currency of a pair. Therefore, 50 pips in Euro-Yen are not worth the same as 50 pips in Euro-Dollar. Entering a new FX position can be done by trading on live quotes with some brokers by one-click trading via electronic platforms. The other alternative is to place an order. This entails placing an order at a given price which would convert to a trade if and when the price is reached within the defined validation of the order. The most common order types used in the market are market orders, limit orders and stop orders. These are traditionally used in different scenarios. A market order could be an order to either buy or sell at market, in other words, where the market is now trading. Limit orders are traditionally used to enter the market at a specific level that's better than the current market level. For example, if you're interested in buying Euro-Dollar, 
but only at a price that is 50 pips cheaper than the current market level, you can place a limit order to buy at your preferred level, which is lower than the current market level. Limit orders can also be used to take profit. To lock in a future potential profit for a long position, you would place a limit order to sell higher than where the market is currently trading. Stop orders are traditionally used as a risk management tool to protect a position against an extensive loss. Stops are always placed at levels worse than where the market is currently trading. For example, if you want to sell, should the market drop by let's say 50 pips, you would place a stop order to sell 50 pips below the current market price. Both limit and stop orders are only executed and transformed into a position if and when the market reaches the specific price at which the order is placed within the said runtime of the order. The transaction is concluded at an agreed price on the settlement date, which is known as the spot date for FX spot transactions. This is usually two business days after the trade has taken place, although a few exceptions of only one business day do exist. Forward outright transactions, however, allow you to choose a settlement date that extends beyond spot. When trading FX, the investor attempts to predict a future difference in price between two currencies. With most brokers, an FX transaction is rolled over each night to reflect a new value date until it's closed. Trading FX spot is suitable for short-term traders, but if you intend to have an FX position for a longer period, a month for example, an FX forward outright might be more suitable. With a forward, the interest rate differential between the two currency pairs traded for the chosen time horizon of your trade is fixed and included in your price at the time of trading. This means that your profit or loss will not be influenced by any potential changes in interest rates during the period in which you hold the position. In contrast, if you'd kept a spot position, the interest rate differential could vary from day to day and will be reflected through the overnight roll of the trade until closed. Because prices in FX are determined by the count of increments as small as the fourth or even fifth decimal of a unit, it's nowadays become an industry standard to trade using leverage. This means that you can trade nominal amounts that are larger than the actual value of your account. Some brokers allow you to trade using leverage that is 100 times your account size. Now, although this is an attractive offer and could potentially result in large profits, it could equally result in extensive and rapid losses. Therefore, risk management and awareness are crucial elements of successful FX trading. Before you begin trading FX, you should assess your own appetite for risk by asking yourself the following questions. How much money do you have to invest? How much can you afford or are you willing to potentially lose? When you trade, how many times out of 10 are you right? A sensible risk to reward ratio is crucial to being profitable over time.